Jesus. She said, if I can just touch him, I'll be well. She came behind, she touched him, and then she felt that she was healed. The last thing that happened to her was she felt better. Yet most people want to feel better before they believe. She believed, then felt better. She believed it. She said it. She did it. Then she felt it. Yet most people, you and I know, want to feel it. Or they'll come for prayer. And they'll come for prayer for healing. And then they go, you know, they start feeling themselves. I don't feel any better. I guess it didn't work. The last thing she did was feel. The first thing she did was believe. So when you pray, believe you receive when you pray. Amen. Faith is believing what I do not see will come to pass. you got to believe it first. The last thing she did was felt better. The first thing she did was believe. Remember that. The believing always comes first. Are you with me now? Amen. Now, back in verse number 25, the Bible says she had a flow of blood for 12 long years. Here's my first thought here, all right? 12 years later, she's still believing. 12 years. Yeah. She hasn't given up hope. Yeah. She's not yet found her answer, but she knows there must be one somewhere. Yeah. 12 years she's still standing. 12 years she's still trying everything she can think of. The Bible says she went to many physicians. She went to everyone she could think of, everyone she could hear about. She spent all the money that she had. Why? She's trying to get better. God put this desire in her heart. And I know people who just give up, and it would have been so easy. 12 years. Get the picture. 12 years of not feeling good. Man, pain's a terrible thing, isn't it? And when somebody has a nagging pain, a gnawing pain, and in her situation with was female problems, that's just wearing on a person. That's so difficult for a person. And it would have been so easy for her to just settle. To just settle. Remember this. In the things of God, good is the enemy of best. Remember that. Good is the enemy of best. Of best. You can have good, you can have best. Now, I first heard that as a single guy. And I heard some guys say, Now, you young men out there, well, which I was a young guy, who want to one day meet the right person, I want to meet the right person. They said, Remember, when it comes to marriage and meeting a girl, good is the enemy of best. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I'm going to put that in the bank right now. Ching, ching, got right on the inside of my heart. Man, I banked that truth right there. And so, those of you who are single and one day want to get married, remember, good is the enemy of best. Remember that. It's so easy to settle. Well, you know, I know he's a... Uh, forget, you know what? Forget that. I'll never get back to my thought. You point made, right? Okay. So it would have been so easy. I'm almost out of time as it is. It would have been so easy for her to settle. I guess this is the way life's going to be. I guess it's just not for me. I guess this is just my lot in life. And I have met people who just settle. Well, I know God's word says that, but you know, I don't know if it's that way for me. I know it's that way for somebody else, but I don't know if it's that way for me. Or I guess my life is just messed up. Or I guess my life is just cursed. Or I guess I just, why would you say such a thing so contrary to God's word? You're redeemed. By the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. You're cleansed in the blood. You're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You're a new creation in Christ. You're in covenant with God. You're a joint heir with Jesus. What are you thinking? Say what the Bible says. Don't yeah. sell the blessings of God short in your own life. And it would have been so easy for her to just settle. But she never settled for less. Twelve years. Years later, she's still believing. Twelve years later, she's still trying. Twelve years later, she's still expecting to get well. And then the Bible says she heard about Jesus. And when she heard, she said, if I can touch him, I'll be healed. If I can touch him, I'll be made whole. So, what she, so listen, what she said was a direct result of what she heard. Amen. And what you and I are saying is a direct result of what you and I are hearing. Yeah. So Jesus said, take heed what you hear. Guys, listen. Say it with me. I am in charge, I'm in charge of what I hear. Of what I hear. Say it again. I am in charge, I am in charge of what I hear. Of what I hear. So listen, if you're hearing something you don't want to hear, don't hear it. Mm -hmm. right. And 
know, that's a deep thought, right? I went to Bible school a long time to learn that. But, but things come at us all the time. Yeah. We have well-meaning friends. Mm. And we have even more well-meaning, ignorant relatives. <laughs> some of us, right? Who mean well, but don't have a clue. Yeah. Who mean well, but frankly don't have a clue about the Bible, the promises of God, or what we're, trying, or what we're about. And they mean well. And sometimes they're meaning well trying to bring us a measure of comfort when all they're doing is causing us to doubt mm -hmm. or causing us to fear. And so listen, what I hear can raise my faith or ruin my faith. What I hear can feed my faith or feed my doubts. So take heed what you hear. The Bible says she heard, so she must have heard something like this. Maybe she heard Mark 3.10, for he healed many, so that as many as had afflictions pressed about him to touch him. Or maybe she heard Mark 6.56. Wherever he entered into villages, cities, or in the country, they laid the sick in the marketplaces. And they begged him that they might just touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched him were made well. Maybe she heard something like Luke 6, 19. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for power went out from him and healed them all. Amen. Whatever it is she heard, whatever it is she heard, spurred faith in her. Amen. Whatever she heard gave birth to an action in her. Yeah. If I can touch him... I can be new well. The only if in her mind was, can I get through the crowd to touch him? <coughs> and the only if in her mind was because of her physical condition, or because of her illness, and her mosaic law, she couldn't be around people. She couldn't even touch people. So she said, I just touch his clothes. Remember when she touched him, and the Lord said, who touched me? She was all afraid. She was, that's why she's afraid. She's not supposed to be around people. But you know what? The time comes when you say, forget tradition, I want to get well. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm amazed how many people will change their theology when they need healing. Amen. Yeah. And people who don't believe in miracles, they just don't need one yet. Uh -huh. But when they need one, they'll change their theology. Yeah. When they need one, they'll find someone to pray. I had a cousin some years ago, and he went to a church and taught against everything we believe. Taught against healing, taught against authority, taught against the gifts of the Holy Spirit, all this stuff. And then he needed a miracle. Who did he call? I was amazed he called me to go over to his house. And he goes, well, started telling me. He was almost embarrassed because he knew we had discussions. He knew what I believed. I knew what he believed. He knew where I, he knew what church I pastored. I knew what church he attended. He knew what I preached. I knew what he listened to being preached. Amen? And they were opposite. So they were pretty far apart. Amen? But now he's in a situation where he needs a miracle. He needs power. He needs a gift of spirit. He needs money of the Holy Spirit of which he hadn't been taught. So I go to his house, and, and he said, that he, and, uh, Ray, uh, you know, uh, this has happened, and, and got this report, and this and that, and, uh, and I know you know something about this, and I need you to pray. It's amazing how many people change our theology when we need a miracle, amen? Yeah. And so then remember that. Don't settle. She didn't settle for anything less than what God said, amen? So I'm in charge of my thoughts. Remember, I'm in charge of what I hear. I'm in charge of what I think. Say it with me. I'm in charge, I'm in charge of what I think. Say it again. I'm in charge, I'm in charge of what I think. Yes, what I think. think. Now, dumb thoughts come to everybody, but what I dwell on, I'm in charge of that. The Bible says, cast down vain imaginations. And every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Take captive every thought. Make it into the obedience of Christ. Amen? So I'm in charge of what I hear. I'm in charge of what I think. I'm in charge of what I say. And I'm in charge of what I do. So take charge. I'm in charge of what I hear. So if I'm hearing something, I think we have well many people, well many people, whatever, but if they're saying something that's, that's just not doing anything but making me want to doubt or be afraid. I just, I just don't want to hear that. Yeah. Right. So just don't hear it. Mm -hmm. If you have to go like this, la, 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 <laughs> just don't hear it. Find, change the channel, do something. I'd rather hear the ball game. Mm -hmm. I'd rather hear weather. I'd rather watch the weather channel. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen? And hear what somebody wants to say. So I'm in charge of that. I'm in charge of what I say. I'm in charge of what I do. Now listen, what I say, what I think, and what I do will either move me closer or farther 
from my answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what I say, what I think, what I do, will either move me closer or farther from my answer. So let's ask ourselves these questions. What things can I hear that will move me closer to my answer? What can I hear? What things can I hear that will move